State diagrams have been my favorite research topic for more than last 20 years. In this video, I am presenting the basic understanding of a state diagram and its components. I am planning to develop a couple of videos on the state diagram. It would be from basic to an advanced level. The state diagram should be the first tool to determine food stability during processing and preservation. A state diagram has wide applications in foods. You could find few applications in the links given in the description box. In this video, I am going to explain a state diagram, an overview. First freezing points, second eutectic points, third glass transition temperatures, We could then draw freezing curve. Solubility line and then glass line. We could then determine the maximal freeze concentration condition, which is the intersection of the freezing curve and glass line. Now we could see regions of glass, rubber, crystal, solution, frozen above TM double prime and frozen below TM double prime. Glass line, solubility line and freezing curve. Finally, we could see the macro regions 1, 2, 3 and 4. Consider two examples potato chips and chewing gum. Potato chips should be crispy and they should be in the glass state and they should be shattered into pieces when you bite. It is similar to breaking a glass bottle. In the case of chewing gum, it should be rubbery and should deform while biting again and again and it would not be ready to be swallowed, that is infinity chewiness. Gummy candy should be leathery and a little hard to chew and after chewing it is ready to be swallowed. Therefore, we need to produce both chewing gum and gummy candy into a rubbery state that is soft rubbery and leathery. We could easily use a state diagram to determine when a food would be in a glassy state or in a rubbery state. Most probably in 1986, Dr. Levin and Dr. Sled presented the state diagram in food science literature. I would like to consider it as the first generation of state diagrams in foods. They included the glass line, freezing curve, and maximal freeze concentration condition, which is the intersection of the extended freezing curve to the glass line by maintaining similar curvature. Later, the characteristic state diagram was updated and progressed, and I will explain that in another video. First, what is a state diagram? A state diagram is a stability map of different states and phases of a food as a function of solids or water content and temperature. The basic states and phases are mainly determined by thermal analysis of foods, for example, differential scanning calorimetry DSC. I will explain DSC and the cooling curve method in another video. In the state diagram, we could observe what are the states or phases of a food when you change its moisture content and temperature during food preparation, processing, storage, consumption or eating, and even after consumption. In addition, we could find out the stability, reactivity and behaviors of a food at different scenarios. Consider the food powder as shown. We need to prepare samples at different moisture levels. Since the state diagram represents the characteristics of phases as a function of moisture, we could prepare samples with different levels of moisture by adding water or by drying or removing water from the sample. First, 
we could predetermine the water that needs to be added or removed to attain a specific moisture before adding or removing moisture. First, we prepared samples with different moisture content up to 0.5 gram solids per gram sample and measured their freezing points. These are shown in the plot of temperature versus solid content. The nutritive point that is solute crystallization was measured and shown in the plot. Second, we prepared the samples with different moisture content from 0.82 to 1 gram solids per gram sample and measured their glass transition temperatures. These are shown in the plot of temperature versus solid content. Now draw the freezing curve passing through freezing points and iterative points. Solubility line passing through iterative point. Then draw the glass line passing through the glass transition temperature. We could locate the maximal freeze concentration condition which is the intersection of the freezing curve and glass line. The characteristics XS double prime can be located on the Y axis and TM double prime can be located on the Y axis. Now we can identify different regions glass, rubbery, crystal, solution, frozen above TM double prime, frozen below TM double prime, glass line, freezing curve, and solubility line. Now we could easily visualize the four macro regions in the star diagram. Region 1 below glass line, region 2 above glass line and below maximal freeze concentration condition, region 3 above maximal freeze concentration condition and below freezing curve, region 4 above freezing curve and glass line. The region 1 is the most stable that is low molecular mobility and region 4 is the most unstable that is high molecular mobility. Now we can understand physically the maximal freeze concentration condition in the frozen foods. First consider a cold environment for example minus 50 degrees C. Place a moist food inside the cold environment. Ice will start to form on the surface and continue until the end. In the progressive freeze concentration due to ice formation, the solution became saturated and then supersaturated. At this stage, solute can be crystallized and it is called eutectic point. At some stage, all freezable water can form ice and solution matrix contains unfreezable water and ice, solids and solutes and unfreezable water. At this stage, all freezable water is transformed to ice that is conditions of maximal ice formation. This stage is termed as the maximal freeze concentration conditions and remaining unfrozen water in the solid matrix is commonly defined as unfreezable water. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video. I will be uploading the next video on the state diagram soon.